and, and so I'm going to bring it back to um, the, uh, the, the topic specifically of this local technology. And um, uh, I think, um, Hakon, I would just like to ask on this, you know, this international element of your company. Um, I, I, I've been to South Korea um, on a field trip. I spoke to a lot of companies that were interested in investing in supply. And demand was staggeringly high. Um, I think it got to Japan levels. Um, and and I, just, I just kind of, you know, if you could just address that market opportunity and maybe how you see it in 2020 to kind of build the same type of facility um, in, in that country, which I, I think at the time that the coastline, the, the, the issue they have is that the summer ocean temperatures are just too warm. So there was companies looking at sinking cages and all this kind of stuff. So um, just, yeah, keen on your perspective there. Yeah, I think um, a very interesting question, and, uh, and our discussions with with Don Juan, uh, who entered as a shareholder in the summer, has been uh, going on since uh, late 2019, and uh, we know they have been searching, and it's a huge global company, the sixth largest seafood company globally, they have been searching for a number of solutions to bring kind of salmon production, uh, local supply to Korea, and and you're totally right. I think the Korean market is growing with uh, with rapid numbers. Uh, their, their love for salmon is very high. It's it's not a huge population, but it's a it's a big population, and it has a very central location also to other close uh, salmon loving countries. And I think one of the aspects that you can do with uh, with a land based facility is you can take water from different levels, different depths, and and even though the the coastline is a little uh, more shallow uh, some places in Korea than what you see uh, in Norway, uh, you, you, I think a lot of the strength is found to take water from different, different depths. And, at, and when you have different depth levels, you could actually mix water to provide a uh, temperature that is uh, acceptable. And then at the same time, there's of course potential to either heat or cool down the water, the last delta, so to say, to get what you would look for as the optimal temperature for salmon growth, which is normally considered to be around, say, 11, 12 degrees Celsius. And uh, so when we are talking now with our, our owners and partners, Don Juan, uh, about a project that we are, are in the planning phase of in Korea, that has been definitely one of the most important issues, is where do we locate to find the perfect water depth, water temperature, and also in terms of, of capex for, for reaching that. So, uh, how many viable locations are there to expand the Ampure business model at, outside of the current location? I would like to um, start with what you, you said that uh, uh, RAS systems uh, needs to be close to the market in order to, to, to have an advantage, right? And then you and, and you talk, we talked about uh, transportation via air. Um, we talked about the footprint, and it's important to add on to that metric that when you get a, a water source which is clean water, it's tempered, so you can you can without heating or cooling the water, uh, you can bring the type of temperature the, the salmon. Uh, likes in order to thrive and to be a good product. And if you look at the um, world maps, so to say, uh, you, of course you have the Gulf Street currents, uh, which has a mixed, uh, which has uh, uh, on on our uh, our side of the world uh, is around seven Celsius in the deep waters, and it's it's it's. Um, is then an issue of actually accessing that water. Uh, I believe Håkon also touched by on that that you can uh, you can bring up water from different uh, depths, and in that regard, you actually need to be able to. Uh, and, but if you are lifting, we did a calculation on our system. If we if we had placed that pool on top of the ground, you would have to. It would cost between 7 to 20 kroner per kilo uh, salmon in order to produce because of the, the energy you need to use to lift the water. 
And that's why you also need to have the, the technology and the method in order to pick up the water from kind of the same level as the ocean. And I believe that's the same what uh, the ocean farms are doing, like Salma, they are building an ocean farm out in the Gulf currents. And they, they also do that because they, they get um, a flow through all the water and they get tempered water. Uh, so that's their method method of actually accessing clean, fresh water, which gives a good biology and a good uh, premium product uh, for the market. So, um, and, and to be specific, I, I don't want to go into specific places, but there are, if you look at the world map, and if you look at the Gulf currents, there are several places, of course, which are suitable for what we are doing. Uh, we can't do this in the Mediterranean because the the amount of flow through we have in our pool is uh, we replace uh, twenty thousand cubic meter of water every hour, and you can imagine trying to either cool or heat that water that that <laughs> that would be a huge uh, uh, energy bill uh, in order to do that and. Uh, so, so, so that's why you are forced to actually use raw systems when you want to place them in big population centers where you have warmer climate.